this service, life itself, is being affirmed. And all life, I bet every person who's standing here, would say that all life is created by God and is therefore holy. So in the face of death, we have come to affirm life as mysterious and fragile and as resilient as it is. And to dedicate this memorial that speaks a tender word to a hardened world, saying to that world that all life is precious. I want you to think now about the mothers of these infants whose bodies were laid to rest here. Over 100 women, most probably young, most married but some single. Women who held in their wounds precious life for a short season and who held in their hearts dreams and hopes and even fears until that time when grief and disappointment and guilt and anger and maybe even in some cases relief took its place. Think about these women whose babies did not make it to full term. Think about those whose babies were born but then soon died. Many of these mothers face their loss alone husbands and boyfriends far away, some not even aware that they would soon be fathers and then that they would not be. And think about the fathers, those who knew that life was on the way. Think of these men who were nearby at home and those who were on distant shores defending our freedom. Think of the seasoned men and the ones who were still really only boys. Many of them shared their wives and their girlfriends' broken hearts when they heard that their baby or their babies had died. Think also about the infants, those 115 baby girls and baby boys at different stages of development, I imagine, who all had heard their mother's heartbeats as they floated in the womb. Many never drew a breath of air into their fragile Lungs, yet we are here to affirm that they lived. Years ago, it was common practice, I've been told, and I could be wrong. I love to put that caveat in there. It does help protect you. <laughs> that the bodies of stillborns and of babies who were miscarried, and even the bodies of babies who lived only a few hours or days, were not ordinarily placed in their mother's or their father's arms. For many parents, Society signaled that these little ones that did not make it were not fully life at all, and things were hushed and rushed, and infant bodies were taken away quickly and buried. Many with no services to affirm that they even existed, leaving gaping wounds in their heart, the hearts of their mothers and fathers who knew. And some of these wounds have never been healed. Perhaps our loving God, through this gathering today will bring healing. Yes, we have come to affirm the lives of these 115 infants and also many others also come to thank the men and women of the Greenleaf Cemetery Board, if that's the right terminology, who worked so diligently to make this day happen. And to also affirm that these infant girls and boys do matter. Not only are they precious to God and the ones who bore them, but they are precious to all of us. Though their lives were very short, they are part of this great, mysterious tapestry of life in which we are all woven. The lives of their bodies laid here to rest are holy in the eyes of God, for they were called into being by God and then were welcomed home by God in God's perfect timing which we, limited mortals, cannot nor ever will understand. God teaches us in the scriptures that human life, even before it has form, is watched over by God. In Psalm 139, David sings God's truth. You hem me in behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. For I, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even
even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and light become night around me, even the darkness will, be not, will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes, O oh God, saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book, for one of them came to me. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. Now in light of that, here is one verse from Paul's second letter to the church of Lord, where he writes, we know that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. In this, from the 8th chapter of Romans, I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ our Lord. Jesus says in John 10, 14, I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. And in Isaiah 40, we hear this good news. He will clean his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. Last page. <laughs> I stand before you and affirm with you that the lives of these infants have significance. They are holy. Notice I did not say were. They are holy and precious in God's sight, who watches over them as he watched over them before they had form. Though their tents, the little bodies in which they lived for a short time, though those tents were destroyed by death, they have an eternal home in heaven with God forever. Nothing can or will ever be able to separate them from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Good Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ himself, has gathered these little lambs, as he will us, in his arms, and he carries them in his bosom forever. I stand before you as a woman who has known this pain of having a pregnancy and in death, of losing an unborn. I stand before you also as a woman who has been healed of deep and bitter grief by a kind and loving God, who by grace at a large conference on Christian healing experienced in the presence of more than 40 other women and one man who had lost infants the assurance from Jesus himself that by unborn that each of our babies was known to God and held safely in Jesus' arms. He who abides in our hearts, Jesus Christ, tends these little lambs who abide there with him. Praise and honor and glory to God, our gracious Father, to Jesus, our gracious Savior, and to the Holy Spirit, the Comforter and the Giver of life. Let us pray. Loving God, strengthen our faith to believe that though these infants died, some without drawing air into their lungs, that you have welcomed them and will always care for them, for they live with you. And by your mercy, one day we will all be together again in the joy of your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah.